let me say a word in defense of reason in dialogue with faith. Because faith is that proof. Faith unites us to that substance. But reason, in order to realize its full potential, needs the horizons revealed by and truths contained in the faith. And not just any faith, but the Catholic faith. Okay, I'm going to use a little cloud for the divine presence, which cannot be perceived by our eyes. So this is God the Father, as it were, in our mental picture. And Jesus, it says, was raised up and uh, exalted at the right hand of the Father. So at the right hand of the Father, let's put our Lord enthroned with his scepter and the Davidic crown. And there is the throne of the Lord at the right hand of the Father. And then uh, here are the feet of our Lord uh, enthroned at the right hand. And it says he's put all things under his feet, all rule, power, dominion, authority. Okay, so let's, let's make an orb representing created reality. And in this created reality, we have the powers and authorities, which include the angels. Do another one here. So we have the, we have the angels, but we also have demons who are part of the rule, power, and authority. They are definitely part of the mix, and we are in warfare against them. Okay, so and there's a you know a whole host, a whole uh, you know whole uh, spiritual hierarchy uh, is in this orb of created reality, and it is all under Christ's feet. That's that's the this is the map of the universe that uh, that Saint Paul is operating with. Now, what I like to ask my students is, where does the church fall into this picture? Don't, don't answer yet. Just think it in your mind, okay? Where does the church fall into this picture? And the first instinct of most of my students is, um, oh, gosh, you know, we're down here, right? We are just pawns in this big spiritual battle that's playing out above us, you know, and we hope we don't get hit by the fallout, you know? <laughs> Let's... Uh, duck under your desks, you know, uh, because there's this big spiritual battle going on and, and you know, Christ is up there and, and we're down here, okay? But that's not what St. Paul says, okay? Let's, let's read it again um, in two places. Uh, verse 22, chapter 122, he has put all things under his feet, and made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body. So the question is, where are we? Well, we are the church, okay? We are the body, okay? And that means that the spiritual authorities as well are also under our feet, okay? Uh, we, we have a victorious position in Christ, um, by the way, this, uh, we, we make a progress on those outlines. Did we get those, staff? Kind of, sort of. <laughs> okay. All right. Keep your fingers crossed. Um, so we have a victorious position in Christ. And some, some spiritual writers stress the fact that we need to realize that in Christ, particularly through the sacraments, which is the means by which we receive the Spirit of Christ, okay, we have been granted victory in Him. And so the spiritual battle is not a battle to victory, it's a battle from victory. Okay? We have the high ground 
You know, some of you, especially you guys, you probably studied military matters, and um, my my boys are in a big uh, World War II kick right now, and they're all into fighter planes from World War II and building models and reading about it and getting videos on YouTube and whatnot and dogfight videos from footage, you know, and all this kind of stuff. And, and when you're dogfighting in the air, uh, you want to come out of the sun and you want to have a higher altitude than your opponent. Okay? You want to surprise your opponent from above. Okay? And then if your plane is from above, you can dive on the opponent and pick up speed. And so you're going a lot faster and you take him by surprise. Okay? Even in infantry warfare, you know, having the high ground is important. So if you go to Gettysburg, what were the big battles over? They were, what, it was over the hills. Okay? Was that little round top and big round top? Or am I getting that confused with Custer? I, I can't remember now. Uh, in any event, um, you know, the hills, you, you'd put your artillery up on the hill, and then with your artillery on the hill, you can shoot out over, and you've got power of the enemy, okay? So think now, take that military image, which is going to come up in Ephesians 6, okay? We're in spiritual warfare. We have the high ground. We are seated with Christ. I said that explicitly in chapter 2. We're seated with Christ in the heavenly places, under Christ's feet are all the spiritual authorities. If this were not so, the church would not have the power of exorcism. But because this is so, the church has the power to cast out the dominions. The church has the power to cast out the spirits. And this reality is not manifest only in a formal exorcism, but this reality of power over the spirits is manifested in every sacrament. Okay? Most notably, we could mention baptism, which includes a rite of exorcism within its very uh, liturgical form. Baptism is the casting out of Satan okay? and the infilling by the Holy Spirit, which is a demonstration that the church is the body of Christ seated above these powers and authorities. Likewise, in confession, if you read the spiritual experts uh, like uh, Father Gabriel Amorth, the chief exorcist of the Diocese of Rome, who's published a couple books on exorcism with Ignatius Press, perhaps you've seen them. Um, an exorcist tells a story, and an exorcist more stories. Um, or uh, more recently, um, uh, Father Gary Thomas, um, uh, whose, uh, whose story was the basis for this movie, The Right which maybe some of you have seen or heard about with uh, Anthony Copkins. Uh, uh, earlier this year, uh, Father Thomas uh, came to Franciscan and gave us some presentations on exorcism. I had the opportunity to be with him and to talk to him about it. And uh, my real interest was to talk to him about the value of confession uh, relative to spiritual warfare, because for years I've been giving talks about the power of confession as spiritual warfare that when you go into the confession, you're driving out your, your demons that are afflicting you, okay? And that you're, you're gaining spiritual freedom. It's a, confession is a deliverance ministry. And so I wanted to check with Father Thomas to see if that agreed with his experience as, a, uh, as the appointed exorcist of his diocese and as somebody who constantly works in the area of deliverance ministry. Uh, and he said, yes, it's true. And he confirmed everything that I had read by Father Morth and others. Father Morth at one place says that a good confession is more effective than an exorcism. That a person who can make a good and complete confession really doesn't need an exorcism. Exorcisms come into play when a person's will is impeded and they can't uh, 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 freely renounce uh, the things that are binding them uh, to evil. So um, in, in the uh, sacrament of confession, we are freed from the hold that uh, the, the spir spiritual forces of evil have on us. And they have that hold by our permission because when we sin, we give permission to the evil one to come inside and, and to latch on. So, and we could go into the other sacraments as well and talk about the, uh, the power over the force of evil that they have. 
But uh, through the ministry of the sacraments, the church is driving out Satan and exercising power over the powers and dominions and the other spiritual forces that are arrayed against the church. And we're able to do that because we are seated with Christ in the heavenly realms. And you would say, well, how is that practical for my spiritual life? Well, it's practical in this way. We need to learn to operate with a spiritual superiority complex. I think too often we're, we're, we're believing that we're down here and that we're pawns in a cosmic battle and that, and that we're powerless. And that's not true, okay? And, and that's a lie that Satan wants us to believe that, that he can make us do things. The devil cannot make us do things, okay? We have victory in Christ, Okay? We have the power to live a holy life. All the powers of the, of the Spirit are present to us. We don't have to continue in bondage. Okay? We don't have to continue in bondage to our addictions, you know, whether it be a substance or pornography or anger or some other kind of besetting sin. We don't have to continue that way our whole life and just kind of slide into purgatory like somebody sliding into home plate, you know, just barely before the ball gets there. You know, we don't have to just make it, okay? We have the power of Christ. This is what the Second Vatican Council called the universal call to holiness, okay? Every one of us, it's not just the religious in their habits that are called to this holy and pristine life. Every one of us in our state of life is called to holiness. And we can because we... We've received it, we've received the down payment of it already through the sacraments. We're working from the victory that Christ has attained for us. Amen? Amen.